Thank you for coming to this presentation. Uh, this work is an uh, intersection between uh, deep learning uh, HPC uh, and for uh, uh, speeding up segmentation uh, models. Uh, it's interesting uh, to see that uh, these models have been uh, used a lot, but sometimes uh, the uh, uh, instructions or the, the guidelines that you see in the literature for speeding up these models uh, not always uh, 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 fit the types of applications that we have. And I show here some results uh, for the seismic, uh, seismic model. But uh, again, these models have been uh, quite popular these days, uh, has been used in many, many areas, ranging for, for you know, uh, 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 remote sensing, uh, uh, applications in uh, agriculture. We have been working a lot in uh, the lab in Brazil on, this, on these areas. Uh, and they have been also uh, used to uh, help seismologists, uh, as you can see from this conference and the pre pre previous editions of these conferences, uh, as a tool uh, in the toolbox of the uh, seismologists to uh, you know, help interpret the results. Uh, the uh, data for training is sparse, at least compared to uh, most other uh, industries. Like, uh, 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 if you think about Facebook, that has uh, m many billions of images, you can think of seismic as, you know, uh, having a sparse data set. But still, uh, training takes very long to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, do. So you uh, need to speed up this, this training. And parallel execution is definitely one, one strategy, right? Uh, there are many challenges uh, in the oil and gas industry, particularly, uh, mainly because this, these models are not uh, particularly uh, uh, suitable for the industry. Uh, we have some w previous work that described the, this, uh, the, the issues, uh, like uh, they are too big, sometimes too, too many parameters, and compared to other uh, industries, as I mentioned, uh, the seismic may, uh, 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 users may not have that many uh, 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 examples. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't fit uh, uh, in the, uh, in the um, uh, GPUs, for instance, like uh, the 3D uh, seismic volumes that uh, may not fit uh, uh, in the available uh, memory. But I'm not going to uh, describe this work. In the, in our references have an, an, another paper describing this. What I'm going to uh, uh, show you here is some, some work that we have been doing to speed up these models, but that takes a different approach compared to what you can see in the general literature of you know, parallel execution of uh, deep neural networks. Uh, well, what the literature says. If you look at uh, some, some examples of papers, you see that you know, uh, this paper on, of, the, of Facebook that says accuracy for large mini batches, scaling SGD uh, batch size to 32 uh, uh, K uh, uh, images, a pretty large mini batch uh, uh, from NVIDIA, CMU, and UC Berkeley. Uh, and from uh, Google, uh, this paper on don't decay the learning rate, increase the batch size. So you see a pattern here, right? So people uh, are using larger and larger mini batches uh, to uh, 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 run in parallel these neural networks. And it actually, uh, don't that get me uh, uh, wrong, these are excellent papers and highly recommended, but I think uh, for some of the executions that uh, you see in, uh, uh, in different industries, like in oil and gas, we may not uh, 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 do a very, uh, 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 may not, should not take these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, recommendations literally. Uh, just the basics, so everybody is on the same page. What are this uh, execution of the, the, the neural network and how it's typically parallelized. Here we have a basic sketch of the training in which you have you know, back propagation, 
the, you, you forward the, 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 the image like you can see here in the bottom uh, uh, right. Um, and then you pass this image through the, the neural network, uh, computer loss, uh, you know, compute gradients, uh, do the back propagation, updating uh, the, the weights, and, and so on. And what typically you do is, uh, for parallelize this neural network, is uh, to divide the mini batch. There are actually many ways you could parallelize your uh, neural network, but the most common one is you uh, divide the large full batch into mini batches and run some of these mini batches concurrently. And then you aggregate the uh, gradients and update your weights. And you know, there are many ways you can divide the mini batches, uh, 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 overlapping or non overlapping, but basically what is what people typically, typically do. Uh, for many nodes, you do exactly the same thing. You have different strategies like doing things synchronously or asynchronously. For instance, IBM has a, a, a library for optimizing uh, synchronous and asynchronous communication uh, for, uh, 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 that fits the uh, uh, underlying network, you know, optimizing for the topology. Uh, but basically, everybody e usually do is synchronous. If you uh, look in the literature, in which uh, for every uh, step of the gradient descent, or for any uh, steps of the gradient descent, you exchange the gradients uh, and then update your or your weights. And if you do that, you can actually uh, show that. Uh, 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 what you have is basically the same walk in the uh, loss landscape that you ha would have say, running this sequentially. But, well, this is basically uh, the strategy to run uh, the gradient descent in parallel. But uh, uh, specifically, what the literature is saying is, uh, 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 is this. Uh, sequ in se sequentially, you run your uh, algorithm, your, your optimization process, you know, taking a small batch, this yellow uh, box here, and, you know, compute the gradients, you get a, 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 a direction that minimizes uh, your loss. It's not exactly, so there is an, some noise here, so you, uh, in this picture it's illustrated by, you know, this uh, red uh, arrow that's not pointing exactly to the minimum, but it's kind of in the right direction. And when you run in parallel, what you have is, you know, many GPUs, many uh, accelerators taking different mini batches, and the hope is that since you are taking a larger uh, effective mini batch, your direction is better compared to the previous, previous uh, direction. So you can take a larger step in that direction. So this is the assumption. But you know, there are some other assumptions that you can see in the literature uh, 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 as well. One of those is that the full batch is very large compared to the uh, 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 you know the effective mini batch that you are you are taking. In this example, is these three uh, yellow boxes are the effective mini batch and the uh, 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 golden uh, 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 one that you know encompasses the three uh, uh, yellow boxes as well. It's the full batch. Uh, so it's way larger uh, than these three uh, yellow boxes. So, uh, and also uh, this, this uh, min effective mini batch uh, is, is a small fraction of the total size. So they actually uh, expi explicitly uh, mentioned that in the papers. But a key, a key assumption that's typically hidden is that if you do not have this very large uh, 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 full batch, it means that you should not execute in parallel. So it should you know, uh, uh, be enough to run just with a single GPU. But actually, uh, a previous work that we did was uh, to show that some models actually need to run 
uh, uh, in parallel, that it would benefit from running in parallel, even though the full batch is not that large. So in a previ uh, previous work that you can see in our references, we actually uh, needed a model, a parallel model, to run this uh, 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 nodule generator that would you know, generate uh, 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 examples for uh, another training in which uh, the execution would take several days, sometimes uh, uh, weeks, to run, uh, even though the full batch was pretty small. So we, just to illustrate what, again, uh, uh, what's the strategy in, in which we are calling uh, weak scaling versus uh, strong scaling, is not, uh, for people that are familiar with HPC, they, they uh, can think of uh, strong scaling as you uh, keep the problem size, uh, the problem uh, the same size as you increase the number of processors. Here, what uh, we are uh, calling uh, strong scaling is to uh, keep the batch, uh, effective batch size the same as we increase the number of uh, uh, processors or GPUs. So here we have uh, an illustration of weak scaling in which sequentially we have this uh, mini batch, but uh, as you uh, go for, in, the, in this example, three GPUs, we have these three uh, uh, boxes that's three times larger, so uh, works uh, 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 similar to you know, at what you would expect for uh, weak scaling. But with strong scaling, actually you keep the mini batch the same size in, in, as, you increase, as you increase the uh, number of GPUs. So in order to test this, uh, we use some public data for uh, the Netherlands uh, to do some uh, uh, segmentation. Uh, and here are some of the results. So, so for this one, we have the uh, blue, bo blue uh, bars are the strongest scaling, uh, the red one, the weak ones. Uh, here, just the execution uh, with uh, uh, two, four, and eight GPUs in the execution time. So you may think, so uh, the strong scaling actually was worse, right? Uh, in that case, yes, uh, 200 uh, epochs uh, uh, we just run for 200, uh, 200 epochs, so it actually executed faster. But if you look some any any metric of you know accuracy f in this instance, uh, the intersection over union, you see that actually the uh, weak scaling, even though finished the 200 uh, uh, epochs faster, didn't achieve uh, a, a great uh, a good uh, accuracy. It was pretty bad actually. Uh, so that, that's because uh, this uh, experiment actually uh, wasn't, you know, uh, 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 it's not a, uh, the thing that we should measure, right? We should measure time to accuracy, I think. Uh, I mean, this is, should, should be the, the, the right thing to measure. And if you do that and establish something like 60%, you see that the, the picture is completely different. You see that actually running weak scaling, it's much worse when you increase the number of GPUs. That's because it takes way longer to that same run to achieve this, the accuracy that we established. So just as final remarks, um, well, uh, we propose this different approach that's, uh, uh, you know, it's not popular among uh, 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 other, other uh, practi uh, practitioners. That's because people has usually focused on running uh, benchmarks that may not part be particularly relevant for some industries. And actually, we found out that for this application that we have for uh, uh, seismic segmentation, that uh, 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 strategy was actually harmful. So. Um, so that's basically uh, the results I would like to show. Before taking questions, I guess we have still five minutes. Uh, just uh, let me do some advertisement. I'm co-organizing uh, with some colleagues from the academia uh, a workshop on these intersections. If you are interested, uh, uh, please have a look. And uh, I, um, 
think now I can take any question if you have. Thank you.